Uh, thanks very much for coming to our talk today. Uh, my name is Wayne, um, and uh, the research is jointly done by Sun Huang, my colleague. We're from Proofpoint, um, so I'll let him introduce himself first, and I'll be doing most of the talking. Hi, guys. My name is Sun Huang. Very happy to be here. I'm a third researcher at Proofpoint. I'm also a pen tester over 10 years' experience. I, I hope you guys enjoy this talk. Thank you. Okay, so uh, my name is Wayne. Um, I founded a security company called uh, Armorized Technologies in 2005, and it was acquired by Proofpoint in 2013. Proofpoint is a public company based, uh, headquartered in Sunnyvale. So now I run an engineering team in Taiwan, uh, which is about 70 plus people, and we do a lot of research on actors. Uh, these criminal groups. Uh, and I talk a lot at various security conferences. Today we're going to be talking about the Norton Goad campaign and the actor. Uh, we named it Norton Goad because their primary server uh, that we found is, is, uh, translates to Norton Goad uh, in, in Russian. So we're going to be talking about the attack chain. Uh, phase one, infect legitimate websites. Phase two, target filtering and scan, uh, scanner invasion. They're TDSs. So this group does not have, this group distributes malware by injecting malicious JavaScript into legitimate websites. And they do so not by hacking into these websites. This group doesn't do any hacking. Um, and we'll explain how, you know, without hacking, how they get into these websites to inject these malicious JavaScript. And then uh, there is, they run a, they've always ran a TDS layer, which prevents security res researchers like us or automated scanners, crawler, robots from accessing their malware distri uh, distribution. So their TDS layer makes sure that they only serve the malicious attacks to the victims that they're targeting. They, they specifically would blacklist out uh, a lot of the regions, a lot of countries that they specifically would not serve to. And of course, um, security vendor IPs, things like that. That's what their TDS is doing. Um, getting into the user machines, we'll talk about the exploit kits uh, that they're using to um, serve a piece of malicious JavaScript or some type of content within a web page um, that would exploit some vulnerability and ultimately cause a download of some malicious payload into the endpoints that's visiting one of these infected but legitimate websites. And then when the payload downloads, uh, we'll be talking about the malware. It's uh, the base of the malware is a banking trojan. That's what they do most. But this piece of malware also has the capability to further download a lot of malicious modules. And we'll be talking about these malicious modules as well. Um, and, um, and finally, after they've harnessed everything from infected endpoint, after they have stolen all the credentials, the uh, banking HTTP conversations or HTTPS conversations, uh, they would turn that endpoint into a tunneling, a paid tunneling service that they offer commercially to fellow crime groups. And they have this very well done interface where um, other attackers can search for a specific IP range. For example, um, if you want to get into NASA and it's very hard to get in, well, you can search on their interface for NASA's IP range. And if, if, if um, it happens that NASA has an infected endpoint, then this service will allow you to tunnel through that endpoint right into the IP range that you want to get into. So you can search by city, state, IP range, things like that. So we'll show you that interface and also the, um, the uh, backend code. Finally, we'll be talking about the victims. Which countries do they target most? Which countries they don't target? Um, from the stolen HTTPS banking credentials uh, or conversations, 
which were the, uh, the, the, the larger banks that, um, that had their uh, end users HTTPS conversation stolen. And we'll make a, a, a conclusion. Okay, so Norngo, they're a Russian speaking cyber crime group. We don't, from their IP range, uh, we kind of know where they are. Of course, we haven't met the group, but from their internal communication and the way they comment their code and the way they name their files, they're definitely Russian speaking. They're using a big list. Um, so they, they buy these huge lists of WordPress, cPanel, admin, usernames, and passwords. And that's why we say they don't do any hacking. Is per oh, they um, purchase from underground markets, um, and they pay a lot for these, these text files in their, uh, with uh, their specified format of uh, what are the cPanel URLs, uh, admin ID, and password. So they buy these uh, in mass volumes. And then this allows them to get into these WordPress sites, legitimate WordPress sites, to inject their uh, malicious JavaScript, which ultimately leads to uh, download and infection of a QBot malware that serves as their base of uh, a botnet that they have been building. So they've built a QBot botnet of over 500,000 infected systems right now. And they have sniffed about 800,000 online banking transactions. And we'll show you the backend database of that. Of which about si almost 60% are with uh, US online banks. Well, not US banks, uh, online transactions. They operate a sophisticated paid proxying service, as we've talked about from um, all of these infected endpoints. Okay, so this is the kill chain. At the very left, we have the uh, compromised but legitimate websites, and, and they'll send, they'll spam out emails with links to these websites. They own a very large number of these websites, uh, but they do not infect, we have not seen them infect at any point of time more than 300 websites at a time. So they own a lot of these websites, but they do not use them all at the same time. Um, it's always, un so, so the number is always between uh, about 100 to 300. Um, and they write their own uh, tools. We have not seen these tools disclosed elsewhere, so we believe that they've written most of these um, scripts themselves to, autom to automatically implant a backdoor into these websites and these backdoors talk to their script so they can constantly upload malicious JavaScript or remove these malicious JavaScript from these websites. And then they'll spam out emails. And Proofpoint being an email security company, that's one of the reasons why uh, we can get a lot of intel from such a crime group. Spam out these, uh, all of these links to legitimate websites when victims click on these links. Uh, they would be served from these websites a piece of malicious JavaScript, which we call a, only a redirector. The redirector would cause the browser to try to fetch content from uh, the TDS. The TDS then determines whether this is somebody that they want to attack, whether um, they're coming from an endpoint that their exploit server, uh, their EK exploit kit is uh, capable of infecting. This group only focuses on Windows. So if you're coming from a Mac, you will be redirected to uh, Google or to some arbitrary site. You will not be redirected to their exploit kit server. If you're, uh, if you're coming from Ubuntu, you won't. You, they will only redirect and attack uh, Windows users. If you're coming from, uh, if you're situated in one of the countries that they specifically blacklist to not serve, they won't serve to you. They have a huge database of um, security vendor IPs 
and search engine IPs. And of course, we're on that list too, some of our IPs. And if you're coming from those IP ranges, they wouldn't serve to you. They have a, da uh, the database also includes data center IPs. They wouldn't serve to most of Amazon, AWS, because they want home users. They don't, you know, if you're coming from a data center, you're some kind of, you're most likely to be a bot, and they don't want to serve to you. So that's what the TDS does. Exploit kit server. Um, if the TDS determines, all right, you're infectable, you're within the range of uh, victims that they want to target, then they redirect, they'll, they'll redirect to an exploit kit, which would then, depending, uh, and um, the TDS determines which exploit kits to redirect you to. Um, if you're on Windows with Internet Explorer, you're redirected to some exploit kit, and um, if you're not using Internet Explorer, if you're using Chrome or Fox, you're redirected to other exploit kits. Um, and uh, sometimes it's also based on whether you have Java installed, for example. Um, just depends on which type of exploit kit that they're uh, using for um, the different browsing platforms on Windows. Uh, they used to operate their own exploit kits, so they would um, rent these uh, shared hosting servers, and they would install their own EKs and run them. Uh, since two, 2014, they have started to not do that. They have started to rent commercially available EKs, um, exploit kit services from their fellow attackers, uh, their fellow um, criminals. So, um, so they don't run their EKs themselves anymore. They rent it as a service now. And then, um, and then here are the, uh, in the middle here are the different exploits that's, that would be served out by these EKs, um, exploit kits to the victims. If exploitation is successful, meaning that um, it's either a zero day or that the victim has an unpatched version of Windows or uh, some browser or Java, then that would cost uh, a malware to drop. Initially, it would be the uh, QBot, which serves as the base. The QBot then links uh, back to their C2 server, command and control server, um, and we'll talk about the communication protocol. Um, and the server can cause download of many additional malware modules onto that end system. So this illustrates uh, the entire kill chain. So let's focus first on the legitimate but compromised WordPress websites. Purchase large numbers of cPanel admin usernames and passwords, and if you want to be the seller, you have to comply with their specified format. So you have to convert your text file to a format that they can accept. And then they have their own uh, custom-made tool which verifies one by one accounts from these purchased cPanels. So the tool, the tool has two parameters. Um, it's a script, it takes an, a file, uh, uh, an input file, and it generates an output file. Input file is the text file that they purchased. Output file is all of those. Output file is a reduced list with those cPanel admin accounts that are working and valid. And this, what the script does is it would go to the, cPanel, uh, to the cPanel URLs and try to log in with the usernames, uh, with the admin IDs and passwords one by one from these text files and, and to validate which ones are working. So that would be the cPanelChecker.po. These are Perl scripts, or sometimes they do it through SSH, so they have an SSH version of the tool. Um, and, then, and then, so they end up with these huge text files of websites where they're, uh, they're, they're having the cPanel admins. And they'll manually choose which websites to inject. Remember we were talking about the TDS. One of the smartest things about their TDS is also that they actively, every time they inject a website manually using these tools, they would configure that particular website, that infected website, into their TDS. So they're on their TDS, there is actually a very accurate list of all of the currently infected websites um, from them. 
And so when TDS sees these visitors coming in, the refer field in the HTTP request has to include, has to be coming from one of their infected websites. So if you're coming from Google, if your refer is blank, the TDS wouldn't redirect you. So you really have to know and be coming from one of their infected websites to get you to the next phase of their attack. Okay, so they do the um, web shell upload by hand. When we talk about a web shell, it's a small piece of, uh, of PHP that they manually upload through cPanel into one of their selected websites through the admin account. Once they get this PHP script implanted into the website somewhere, and they usually would um, uh, put it in a seemingly legitimate directory, mostly they would hit it un under one of the directories in WordPress, and they would you know, give a good file name so that it wouldn't be that obvious that that piece of PHP isn't a part of WordPress. Um, and the directory, of course, has to be um, accessible to uh, the public. And sometimes they would go and configure that. Once this web shell, this PHP script, has been uploaded and has been configured correctly, they do not need ever the admin username and password anymore. So at this point, if the website admin changes password, doesn't matter. Because that piece of PHP script uh, serves as a backdoor. Um, they have another piece of script that talks to this injected PHP script so that they can create WordPress uh, admins or users or modify any files on the server. So the iframer agent.php um, is the original file name of this web shell. When they manually upload it, they'll give it some name. Um, and their, the counterpart that talks to this backdoor, that tells this backdoor what to, what to do on the infected website, is a Perl script called uh, smartiframer.pl. Okay, so let's look at some code here. Uh, the first one is first one is called uh, cpanelchecker.pl. This is where uh, they're taking uh, a text file and then comparing, uh, validating the user, uh, admin username and passwords that they have bought. It's multi-threaded. So um, let's see, you can see that uh, the number of threads, by default, they've configured it to 40. So they run 40 threads at a time. Takes two input, uh, input file and output file. And then basically just, um, right, you can see here, host port login password, that's it. Actually only four parameters. So they're reading these four parameters at a time from the text file and then they would go, they know the cPanel um, protocol, uh, HTTP format, and they would just verify one by one. Okay, the second one is iframeragent.php. This is the web shell that we talked about. Let's see. So um, here is Okay, so for example, it has create WordPress user. Okay, so um, the web, once this PHP script has been implanted, then they can use their Perl script to talk to it to create additional web uh, WordPress users. Execute injection. Uh, so you can see, we can see here that um, it returns uh, one if it's successful and returns two if the file has already been injected previously. How, how do they know that the file has been injected previously? 
So, and how do they support a feature to remove their injection? Okay, uh, injecting a file. This is, they, they, they want to have a piece of malicious JavaScript, a redirector, served out on every page of this WordPress website. So they have this piece of JavaScript that uh, would cause the browser to start to fetch from their TDS. And so they want to inject this JavaScript somewhere in one of the files in WordPress uh, that will cause an ultimate result of every page of that WordPress website includes that piece of JavaScript. So it can be uh, multiple files in WordPress. But the key is um, this block of JavaScript that they want to uh, inject, they prepend and append. So before this piece of JavaScript and right after this piece of JavaScript, they, they would uh, add two comments. And these comments are in arbitrary strings so as to make signaturing hard, so they're not fixed strings, um, but they're fixed lengths, okay? Um, and so, so, and when, they, when, when they're trying to detect whether a file has been injected previously with a block of JavaScript by their own people, is if they, they would, uh, this piece of PHP script would go and look in that file and would, uh, would search whether in the file exists two comments of fixed length. Uh, I forgot how many bytes it is. 16 bytes, 16 characters. So if this file sees within any PHP or HTML, two HTML comments, each of exactly 16 bytes, then they would, they would then um, decide that, OK, so within these comments, is a piece of JavaScript that we injected in the past. So, th so that they wouldn't uh, be injecting a WordPress site twice. And this would uh, allow them, of course, uh, it's not very accurate. They can make mistakes, but it doesn't matter. If they blow up the website, they'll just go to an, uh, the next one. Um, so this also allows them to remove uh, their previous injections. Smart iframer.pl, this is the Perl script that serves as the counterpart to that web shell. So this is what they run uh, manually to talk to uh, multiple websites with the same protocol and inject that piece of JavaScript into multiple websites. It reads a configuration file. So we can see here that um, here is the web shell path. Okay, uh, and um, and this uh, like jQuery, this one is uh, is the the file that they want to inject. The file within which they want to inject their piece of JavaScript. So they often inject it into one of the legitimate WordPress files or legitimate files on the website. jQuery is the often used one. So they would inject that piece of malicious JavaScript within jQuery. Uh, data tail, their injection parameter supports, um, so this is how, how they do the injection. The, um, the Perl script talks to the PHP script and tells the PHP script, uh, I want to inject in jQuery.js, right? This is the file that I want to inject. And I want to, I want, you to find the, uh, I want you to find the first occurrence of this regular expression. And that regular expression is actually a, just a, a marker, right? And I want you to inject, after you've found the first match of this regex, then please inject my uh, malicious JavaScript either at the beginning of that marker at, of that occurrence or at the tail of that occurrence. So data tail. Here, um, you can see they specified, and this is an actual uh, configuration file we've retrieved. Um, they, they, um, they often use the tail parameter, which means find this regex, find the first occurrence, and inject right afterwards. And then their JS code would be here. Okay. 
they would put their JS code here. Okay, so as you can see, the, um, the Perl script reads, reads the configuration file. Uh, and then uh, it supports two parameters, usage, check, or edit. So you can either check or edit. Um, and then it would go and do its thing. It would do the regular expression, and uh, it would decide whether to uh, inject at the right before the occurrence or at the tail of an occurrence. <coughs> it would um, open the, uh, the JavaScript, prepare it for injection, and here is um, where it's uh, preparing the fixed uh, comments that we've talked about as markers for the beginning and end of their, uh, of their injection. Okay. How, how come, um, so if you, if we take a URL of one of their infected websites, or if we take that piece of JavaScript that they have injected into these websites that redirects to TDS, the TDS, or if we take the, the malicious payload, the QBot that's been downloaded to the endpoint once exploitation is successful, usually, we throw it down to virus total, the, Antivirus detection is usually between zero to five out of the 55 uh, security vendors on virus total. Why is that? Uh, okay, hold on. I'll get to that. Okay, so we've talked about this. Okay. So I've uh, skipped too much. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so um, back to the, uh, the script that they're validating the WordPress admins. Um, it's also the, it also has a feature to, to collect signatures of the server, right? So it's because what they have purchased is, is not WordPress admins, it's actually cPanel admins. So they have to make sure that this website is running WordPress. And the way they do that is they use the uh, cPanel checker also to, to collect um, some signatures from some characteristics from that server. And that would include the number of HTML files, number of PHP files, ASP files, Perl files, things like that. And just by the numbers, um, they, would determine, they would decide, okay, whether, whether this website it, it definitely has a cPanel, but is it WordPress or not? Uh, so this is the way that they distinguish and they identify WordPress sites. Okay, so this is an illustration. Uh, they have that piece of JavaScript redirector that they want to put into the compromised website. So what they do is they use the cPanel, upload iframeagent.php, which we've talked about, and they have the script called um, smartiframer.pl that would Take, read in this piece of JavaScript, send it, uh, go talk to the web shell, iframeagent.php, uh, and have that PHP inject their JavaScript redirector into one of the files um, within these compromised websites with the, res uh, the ending result to be that their JavaScript would get served on every page of these websites. Okay, done with that. And then if you're within their target range, uh, a victim would be redirected to a TDS. Okay, so um, you can see that's, uh, this is how an injection would look like. OK, 
Okay, this is the fixed comment, followed by alert. That's our JavaScript, followed by 16 characters of fixed comment. Smart iframer.po remotely talks to iframer agent, sends HTTP request, then check JS code. JS code redirects to TDS. Review that. Okay, so there are multiple things that they're doing to evade antivirus detection. One is uh, they've always been using JavaScript obfuscation, and the tool that they have been using for a number of years is the J sub trial version. Um, so this is uh, how the, obfusc uh, the obfuscated code looks like. The obfuscated uh, TDS URL uh, in 2014 would look like this. And uh, so every time when we, when we, kind, of, we kind of see this format with, a, with the uh, K in the end, um, followed by parameter TS, we kind of know it's, uh, you know, it, it's from this group. Uh, today, in 2016, they're still using the JSUB version. Uh, the, the, the script looks a little bit different. Um, that's how the obfuscation looks right now. The obfuscated script, um, there is always a view forum um, within the middle of um, the script. So this is how, it, within the middle of the URL, this is how it looks today. And um, so they have been using this JSUB tool for about three years. Okay, their TDS. Prior to 2013, they were running their own um, simple TDS. From 2013 to March 2014, they were running their Kitaro TDS. And then all of a sudden, from March 4 of 2014 to present, uh, they have been renting uh, Sutra TDS. Common TDS features, we've talked about this, IP range, language, referrers. Uh, may, uh, the, the main objective here is to avoid crawlers and security scanners and offer traffic stat dashboards. Okay, so this is how their, today, how their Sutra TDS control panel looks like. Um, one example, um, for example, it's uh, look at here. So, for example, block right uh, visitors with blank refer block, and actually um, they they've also configured a, a, as we said a detailed list of all of their infected websites. So you, it's not only that you can't be blank; you have to be coming from one of those. Um, and for example, block all of these countries, right? So they, they've specifically named all these countries as not one of the countries that they want to infect. So if you're coming, if your IP is within one of these countries, you wouldn't get infected. Because um, they, they, they know, ultimately, they're trying to steal um, online banking credentials. And that requires to, them to know very precisely uh, the the HTTP format and HTTPS conversation format of these banks that they're targeting. So if you're not going to be one of the users to these banks, they don't want to infect you. Um, and as you can see, here is the rule for IE, and this is how they identify IE. So it's basically, this whole thing is basically saying, if you're using IE and, um, and if you're within the, within the uh, target range that they want to redirect you to the Sweet Orange exploit kit. This one, um, if you're using Firefox, still Sweet Orange, and the way to recognize Firefox is very easy, uh, the agent string. Okay. And um, so for the rest, Chrome, Safari, Opera, whatever, um, they're redirecting to uh, some Java exploit, Java sign after some um, exploits that they put together that works against Java. Okay, and this is their big referer list 
of all of the infected websites. So the refer also has to be coming from one of these. We can see the summary when we captured this screenshot. Um, they had a total of uh, 23 million unique visitors of, uh, and 47 million raw hits uh, to, to this particular TDS um, before the TDS reboots, of course. So we can look at the accepted uh, TDS browser hit distribution. So these are the accepted visitors that was subsequently served with exploits. Um, as you can see, no, no Safari, whatever, they're only targeting Windows. Uh, Firefox, about 43%. Uh, IE, family, about half. That's just for this particular group. OK, so uh, let's talk about, so, so we're done with the TDS. Let's talk about their EKs and the exploits that they're using. Um, so uh, again, the refer has to be checked, has to match, and that's the obfuscated JavaScript that's being served. Okay, and depending on the different browsing environments, you would get served um, to different. In, in 2016, they were using Rig EK. They do not run their own uh, exploit servers. All of these uh, that you saw, they rent as a paid service. So they don't operate these uh, exploits. They just provide, provide the exploits with the ultimate, uh, these exploit pro uh, kit providers with the ultimate payload that they want to spread out. And they redirect traffic to these EKs, but they don't run these EKs. OK, so this was uh, what we were talking about. Um, they, were, uh, they had this tool that they, they had written themselves to check against Scan4U um, using Scan4U's API. Scan4U is kind of like VirusTotal. It has, I, I believe, 30 or 40 some security vendors that it works with. And so what this group would do is uh, it would constantly be submitting all of its infrastructure to scan for use API to make sure that, for example, their less than 300 infected websites are not blacklisted by any security vendor. Uh, their TDS URLs are not blacklisted. Their exploit server URLs are not blacklisted. Their malicious JavaScript that they obfuscate using JSUB and upload to these web servers are not detected or flagged by any antivirus. Their ultimate payload, their QBot, okay, they, they uh, manually keep on re-obfuscating, uh, re obfuscate this piece of payload. And so they want to make sure that their current obfuscation also um, is not detected by any antivirus. They had this Oscar.pl that, uh, that primarily um, notifies is responsible for notify them. So when one uh, antivirus vendor starts to detect any one of these uh, pieces of their infrastructure, they would get notified by ICQ using Oscar.pl. Uh, Oscar.pl is also responsible for, and it's more complicated, but it, when, um, when they suc they've successfully sniffed an HTTPS conversation that's live, um, and they got this conversation, then they want to very quickly, while the user is still locked in, um, um, use the credentials that they have stolen to act on behalf of the user. Um, and so they get notified by ICQ um, when this happens, also through Oscar.pl. And that's why their antivirus detection rate is always 0 to 5 out of 55. When one of their, uh, their infected websites is detected by Antivirus that would go manually go in, clean up, um, and then and then just uh, throw that website away, jump to another website, go infect another website. Um, if their QBot 
the current obfuscation of their QBots detected, they would just re-obfuscate, generate a new version, put it on their C2 again um, with the same uh, URL uh, for the EKs, for the exploit show code to download. Malware. Uh, they have adopted QBot as their primary pay payload. QBot has been around since 2007. Uh, it used to be a worm, uh, but now it's, uh, they turned it into a RIN3 rootkit. The communication is DGA domains plus RC4 encryption with a SHA-1 random salt, and we'll show you, if time permits, how to decrypt that uh, protocol. It ex exfiltrates, when it runs, ex exfiltrates POP3 FTP passwords, keystrokes, certificates, things like that. It has anti-VM and anti-sandbox features, so it wouldn't run, for example, in, uh, in a lot of the popular sandboxes. Second stage, uh, it also installs Session Spy, Web Inject, um, and these are man in the, in what we call man in the browser. So um, they are their, their browser helper objects or their DLLs that hooks into the browser. And this allows them to sniff off HTTPS conversations um, because they hooked into the browser at the point where the browser is already decrypted HTTP traffic. Um, and that's how they're able to sniff out all of the HTTPS banking sessions. Um, strategy change. Uh, so they, uh, in 2015, they were still using Sweet Orange. Now they're using BigEK, but it's all just to spread their QBot. Uh, this is the command and control panel of their QBot. Uh, from the panel, they can see every single infected endpoint. And then um, here is a list of commands that they want these endpoints to further do. And a lot of times, it's to install additional malicious modules. And uh, you can see um, every, every endpoint has a NIC. Um, OK, uh, in, let's uh, very quickly do this. Uh, there is RC for encryption, basically. The QBot talks back to their C2 server. And the traffic is RC4 encrypted with a randomly generated salt. Uh, but <clears throat> it's very easy to decrypt because they put the hash, uh, the hash 16 bytes of the salt at the beginning of their message. So it's very simple. Just take the beginning 16, 16 bytes, and then you can decrypt their RC4 protocol. Roll a, a script to decrypt that. Um, <clears throat> and this is how. Uh, the, the communication looks like when the QBot talks back to their C2. The C2 then would give back usually a command for the bot to execute, and this is how it looks like. Okay, so uh, here is uh, one of their back and control panels where they have harvested all these live HTTPS banking conversations. They know very precisely the format of uh, all of these banks' uh, online transactions. So when you log into a, when you go to like www.wolfsfargo.com, uh, uh, which is my bank, they recognize these conversations, right? So when you log in, and remember, uh, they do man in the browser, so they can decrypt HTTPS traffic. So, uh, so what happens is this is what they will send back, uh, right here, right? Text box password equals blah blah blah. Now uh, this is live, directly captured from their control panel. So once this happens, they will also get notified with their um, uh, with their ICQ Perl script. Get notified. Now the the banks are are, are, are very well. Um, banking, online banking security of all these banks that they target are done very well, right? So if the victim is from, let's say, is in San Francisco, then if you want to impersonate the victim, you also have to be from almost um, the same IP range in San Francisco. That's why they run that tunneling service. So they would quickly try either to tunnel through the exact endpoint 
where they got this piece of HTTPS conversation from, or any other endpoint that's within uh, that, um, that city. That's why they have this query interface that, that I'll show you. And they'll go right in and, and they would, um, they, they, they would um, impersonate the, the victim. Um, initially, it was very hard to do that research because um, they, uh, they have reverse proxies in front of Nginx reverse proxies in front of their TDSs and their C2s. Uh, and how we found out the actual IPs of the TDSs and C2s is um, uh, first they had a cookie set. Uh, and within the cookie, well, we don't know what this is for, but within the cookie, um, they had the real, uh, the actual host. Um, and that, that's how we were able to uh, find out. The other one is, um, um, on their, on all their, all their, most of their engine nexus, uh, they have PHP info um, enabled. So, uh, so that was pretty easy. Um, on server name and server address, we were able to get uh, there where their servers are really are. Okay, this is uh, SOX fabric. It's a SDK. Um, it's it's uh, it's for any other malware developers to tunnel through their paid tunneling service. It's, uh, it's written in C, and it's just very easy to use. Um, and then uh, once, so once you do that, they give, once you become their customer, they give you this SOX uh, SDK that uh, just uh, a few lines would allow you to, your malware to tunnel through uh, their proxying service. And then you can log in to this UI and then you can search by city, state, zip, um, or IP. And um, so we are referring to, uh, like here, search for something, and we get all these um, endpoints that's, uh, that's uh, within that range. And you can select an endpoint. Every endpoint has a unique nickna nickname, as you saw, and then you can tunnel through that endpoint. Single line API. Okay, okay, so I'll show a little bit of code. Okay, so show a little bit of code. Here is their, uh, their uh, AV Sutra check that checks uh, against antivirus. Uh, and here you can see uh, they're checking against 25 security vendors here. Some of the vendors they do not check against. So these are probably the ones that they feel are uh, are the good ones, so they don't want to get uh, detected by these ones. And they're, they're right here. Um, so within this, there's actually their actual uh, username and password that they use um, for Sutra uh, for the uh, for the check. Here is the uh, here is the SOX SDK, and it's very simple. It's just server IP port. And then the nickname. Nickname is the endpoint that you want to tunnel through, and then, and then they'll they'll establish uh, the tunnel. Okay, here is the pricing. Unlimited, uh, unlimited, one day access, ten bucks. Okay, so it's not very expensive. Who are the victims? Half a million unique infections, uh, covering almost two million unique IPs. This is uh, another of their backend. So, uh, from the from these database tables, our no time to show you guys, but our conclusion was about half half a million unique infections, covering uh, about two million unique IP addresses right now. Zero point eight e-banking. Uh, related HTTPS conversations stolen. Um, and we've got the data from, so, so you can see, you can see, for example, right, uh, sign on um, or change password, warning, blah, blah, blah. So, and, and each of these, they recognize the HTML form, format, or the HTTPS conversation format. 
they have this tool called Mail Checker Suite. And what this tool does is, because a lot of times when you log in, the, the, the banks will feel a little bit strange, right? For example, your IP just changed a little bit. Um, so the bank will send you an email saying, basically saying, we, we still let you log in, but you, you, you want to check this. And so what they would do is they, they would, and this is why their QBot steals POP3 password. They will log into the user, uh, they will use this, uh, this tool that they wrote, don't have time to show it, called, called um, checkmail.pl. And they will log into the user's mailbox and they will identify, they know the, the, they have these regex for the emails coming from the banks. So they will identify those emails and kill it, okay? So your bank will be sending you an email alert when something is, is uh, seemingly wrong, but they'll kill that email. Another way to do it is they'll just flood your mailbox. <laughs> they'll just flood it. So hoping that you wouldn't see the bank's alerts. Um, so that is uh, checkmail.pl or mailbomber.pl. Victim distribution, 75% uh, from the US about 3% 3, 3 from Britain, um, Italy, Canada, Australia, that's about it. Um, and they blacklist a lot of countries. Uh, victim operating system distribution, XP, still 52%. The other 52, Windows 7 Vis uh, or Vista, the other 50. Top uh, online banking transactions stolen. So we have uh, Fidelity, Bank of America, JP Morgan, uh, PNC, and Wells Fargo. Conclusion, this actor is currently still active. The kill chain is, uh, as we described, malicious TDS redirect to TDS redirect to exploit kit download malicious payload. Developed quite a few in-house tools and we have showed you their tools and their entire process. QBot to establish a foothold into the endpoint, download further malware. A lot of time, uh, and they seem to be installing VNC, remote desktop, a lot. Money rules. Um, from the data we, we've collected, um, we believe that they're making quite a lot of money. All right, that's it. Um, time's up. Do we have time for questions? Okay. All right. All right. I'll be here. All right. Thank you.